Hi, good afternoon. I hope you're having a splendid day, um, <laughs> irrespective of the rain. Welcome and God bless you to the World Oasis uh, International uh, and its empowerment service, where we're studying the 15 invaluable laws of growth by John C. Maxwell. And we're looking today at law number 10, law of the rubber band. Um, I want to say what a prayer first before we dive into what we're going to be looking at today by the grace of God. Uh, Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you for preserving us irrespective of all the forces that are operating around us. Thank you for life. Thank you for provision. Thank you for sustenance. Thank you for the wonderful sacrifice at Calvary that Jesus provided for us to make us saved. Thank you, Father, because you are the architect of it all. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Gentle Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We say thank you for your wonderful ministry to us. Thank you for standing by. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for enabling. Thank you for quickening. Thank you for providing counsel. Thank you for teaching. Holy, Holy Trinity, my, my gratitude knows no bounds to for all the wonderful things that you've done, both the ones we know and the ones we don't know. Daddy, accept this small token that we've offered today in the name of Jesus. Father, please come and glorify yourself in all of this today in the name of Jesus. Daddy Jehovah, come and glorify yourself in the midst of this teaching today in the name of Jesus. Lord, use this teaching to bring in the lost. It will not just be uh, just another message, another uh, speech. Mm -mm. It will cause men to turn away from where they were going and turn back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your word says in Isaiah that you are the Lord that teacheth us to prosper. Father, even through this message, teach us to prosper. Empower your people that will hear this message today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. This, this vessel of clay submits himself to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, please come and take absolute control. Father, rest the word and plant it in the hearts of men. The wicked one will not see any room to steal this word from us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' most exalted name, we have prayed. And the saints of God shall say, Amen. So, Lord, number 10 today, I just want to say thank you to, to Sister B for letting me take this class. Number one, number two, I want to say thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's given me this opportunity to share with, with his people in this small way. Lord, be glorified now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, please come and take control. Lord, number 10 uh, of, of the 15 invaluable laws of growth is the law of the rubber band. And it says, it says, growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. Growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. And I'm going to read some, what I consider my anchor verses, and then, you know, we'll flow therefrom. Um, one of my anchor verses is John 15, 1 to 2. And it reads as follows, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So just for purposes of uh, minor exegesis, if you like, um, where the Bible says he purgeth it, beside the word purge, just put in parenthesis, he stretcheth it. So purging could be stretching praise Jesus, that we may bring forth more fruit. You and me will bring more fruit that will give God glory in Jesus' name. Another verse of scripture that I'd like to commend for your attention as one of the anchor verses today is Hebrews 12, 2 through to 4. It says as follows, Hebrews 12, 2 through to 4. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Where you find the words contradiction of sinners, you can put in parenthesis. How, for consider him that, no, besides what endured, you can then put the words stretched. 
For consider him that was stretched. Praise Jesus. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. The, 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 the end product of Jesus' being stretched was that he shed his blood. Another verse of scripture that is an anchor, one of the anchor verses that I'd like to attract your attention to, that I think is illustrative of the principles that of the law of the rubber band, is Philippians 2, 7 through to 11. Again, it's Jesus is the example of stretching in this verse. Philippians 2, 7 through to 11 reads as follows, but made himself, himself being Jesus, of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Stretching is humbling. No, no doubt about it. Stretching is humbling. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, a name which is above every name. Hallelujah. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The, the long and short of these verses is that because Jesus was stretched, Jesus was stretched in the sense that he took on the form of a servant, came onto the earth, left his heavenly glory, came to the earth, and was tortured by men and died for our sins for that very reason of his stretching he was exalted he still is exalted he's seated at the right hand side of the father and now has a name above every other name and you know when you finish when maybe when we finish it it will be clear that when we are when we uh, uh, obey you know obey the law of the rubber band what then happens is is that we end up with the, an exalted name, uh, a name that is uh, famous and distinguished, if you like. So shall it be for somebody listening to us today in the name of Jesus. There's a word of encouragement for somebody listening. Um, I mean, I just heard it when I was in the bathroom a few minutes ago, just before I came down. And it's from Psalm 115, verse 12. It says, the Lord has been mindful of us. He said, I should say to somebody, I am mindful of you. You may be down, you may be looking like you are out, but excuse me, God is mindful of you. The, you, 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 you can't be counted out until the fat lady sings. So he, he, the fat lady hears God and he said, I am mindful of you. So rest assured, you are going to rise up again and you are going to move forward again in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, you know, it's critical that we, I mean, I've hinted at it already, but it's important that I just say it and lay it bare that um, Jesus, no preacher can really preach, no preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ can really preach, uh, you know, go so far as not to point back to the cross. We must always point back to the cross. The reason why the cross is, 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 an, is, is important to this topic is that he who was nailed to it is our example. And, you know, as we delve further, it will be clear you know, that he is our example and he's a prime example of the rubber band. Anyway, let's, let's uh, move on. Let's dive into the matter further or let's go deeper by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit. I, I think it's important before we, we, we look at the scriptural ramifications of the text, the, the author's text, um, it's critical that we look at the meaning of the word tension. What is the meaning of the word tension? I'm not looking at any dictionary definition now. Um, I'm not looking at any dictionary definition. I'm just looking at the text and, you know, giving a definition. Um, tension, in my view, is equal to motivation. Tension is equal to motivation. Tension is equal to motivation. Jesus said, and this is in answer to, you know, one of the things that happens to us when, we, when, when, we, uh, when we've achieved a goal, one of the things that happens is complacency. But Jesus said in John 15, he said, ask 14. He said, ask until your joy be full. He says, ask, on, ask until your joy be full. So we as believers, we're not expected to 
you know, simply arrive at a destination. We are an ongoing progress, progression. Our trajectory is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And it's a continuing process that continues even up until when we depart to be with the Lord. So that when we arrive there, we arrive in perfection. So shall it be for somebody here in the name of Jesus. So shall it be for somebody here in the name of Jesus. Motivation is a strong internal desire. Motivation is usually a strong internal desire. A strong internal desire that propels a transition from a person's present level of life to a better level of life. Praise Jesus. A, 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 um, what do you call it? A tension. The way I've defined, I mean, motivation, beg your pardon, which is tension, is a strong internal desire or motivation to transition from one's present level of life to a better level of life. And usually, that um, strong internal desire is fueled usually by one of these three things, or possibly even other things, but one of these three, uh, is, it's easy to say. A, a bad experience. B, an unpleasant status quo. C, vision or revelation versus current reality. D, opportunity dressed up as a challenge. I'll, ref I'll go over that again. Motivation is a strong internal desire to transition from one's present level of life to a better level of life, driven or fueled by a bad experience, A, B, by a continuing unpleasant status quo, a continuing unpleasant status quo, C, vision or revelation opposed to your current reality. When your vision, where you think you should be, is completely contradictory to where you are, then there, usually what should happen is that there should be a strong desire internally that propels you to take whatever steps are necessary so that you can transition from where you are to that superior future that you see. Praise the Lord. And then sometimes this motivation or tension is driven by an opportunity that presents itself as a challenge. Opportunity that presents itself as a challenge. Opportunity that presents itself as a challenge. Praise Jesus. Okay, so let's look at, uh, I'd also like to look at the meaning of stretching. Stretching. Now, uh, again, this isn't a, a, a dictionary definition. This is um, a bespoke de definition that I've, you know, generated on the basis of the material that we're dealing with. But it's pretty close to, you know, the dictionary definition. Uh, um, let, me, let me provide context and then give the definition. If there is no tension, that is internal motivation, stretching will never happen. If there is no tension, that is internal, intense internal motivation, stretching will never happen. Stretching is doing whatever needs to be done within reason in order to achieve a goal or to complete a project or to get a promotion or to get a job done or to accomplish a kingdom, to accomplish a kingdom of faith project. I'll take that again. If there is no tension, that is intense internal motivation, stretching never takes place. What stretching is, is, is that it is doing whatever needs to be done within reason in order to achieve a goal or to complete a project or to get a promotion or to get the job done or to accomplish a kingdom of faith project. Praise Jesus. I remember when, when I was in uh, final year in university and um, I remember when I was in final year university and I had a, um, my, my, my modus operandi in studying at the time was I would ensure that I complete reading the syllabus the night before and I would have usually, uh, what's the word, uh, we used to call it codification, I would have you know, done my notes in class 
and my research succinctly in a separate notebook. And my task was to ensure that before I went to bed that night, I would have read through that material. And if it was 1 a.m. and I had not read through that material, there was no sleep until we finished reading it. And if I felt sleepy at 11 p.m. and I had not finished reading it, by golly, if I had to stand, I would stand until I would read it. Sleep, no way for you. So, it, 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 you know, what it was was doing whatever I needed to do in order to achieve my goal. And God helped me and I was able to achieve that goal of passing through, the, passing through university. Maybe to illustrate the thing, the proposition that I'm trying to get across or the broad principle I'm trying to get across is uh, Matthew 7, uh, 7, 13 through to 14. Matthew 7, 7, Matthew 7, 13 through to 14. And Matthew 7, 13 and 14 reads as follows. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. But, and many there be which go in their at. Verse 14, because the straight, straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, life, and few there be that find it. So, you know, imagine when you're trying to enter into a room or a hall that there's only one entrance and it's a double, it's a double door that they've closed one door and there's a squeeze. Uh, God help us in these periods of social distance. But what it means is that if there's something good on the inside, people will struggle to get in. Now, that struggle to get in is stretching. That's the way I look at it. Uh, another common scripture that we cite also to support this point, um, you know, is Matthew eleven twelve. 12. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. There's, a, there's also an, a definition, uh, I mean, it's something I used to say, you know, previously, and I'd like to say, you know, because I think it's illustrative also of what I'm driving at. Um, stretching is deploying every legitimate scriptural principle. Stretching is deploying every legitimate scriptural principle or practice for the purpose of taking delivery of the promises of God. Stretching is deploying every legitimate scriptural principle or practice for the purpose of taking delivery of the promises of God. So, so now that we have all of that squared away, let's, let's move into the benefits of, 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 of stretching. The author says benefit of tension, but I have, permit me, artistic license. I've said I prefer benefits of tension stroke stretching. Or what usually happens when you stretch? Okay, praise Jesus. Okay, so what are the benefits of stretching and uh, benefits of tension and stretching? Or what usually happens when you stretch? So in the book, you find the first you know, subheading under that point is few people want to stretch. Few people want to stretch. Now, I put it differently. I framed it differently by saying what usually happens when you stretch. Now, number one, when you stretch, your potential or hidden capabilities are dredged up. When you stretch, your potential or hidden capabilities are dredged up. It took me to be a pastor to discover that I had facilities management capacity for me to understand that I was, I also innately came from the shop as I could, I, I understood drawings and buildings without going for any formal you know, training. I could, I just, I, I'd look at them and I'd immediately under, understand them. So the point I'm making is that, you know, it, it's only when you are put in the pickle that you now discover that there's stuff in you that you had. Or like I like to say, it's only when you peel the orange and squeeze it that you know what's inside of it. It took Jesus's ascension to illustrate the principle from the Bible. It took Jesus's ascension for Peter to heal the lame man at the beautiful gate and to raise Tabitha from the dead in, in the book of Acts chapter 3 and in the book of Acts chapter 9. It took Jesus' ascending 
and, and, and it wasn't a pleasant experience for the disciples. He was their master for three years and had done all kinds of goodness to, toward them. They had seen him. They knew he was the son of God. Why would he leave us here? And that was why they were complaining. However, it took his leaving for Peter to step into himself and potential that was hidden in him bubbles to the surface. So uh, it, the same Peter was the same guy that brought the Holy Ghost effectively, as it were, to the Gentiles for the very first time in, in, in Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius. So, so, so when, um, when you don't stretch, hidden abilities, hidden capacity remains latent within you and doesn't come out. And, and you don't know that you carry it. Another point that I wanted to make under the sub point one is that when you don't, when you don't um, stretch, your potential lies dormant and untapped. I more or less said it, but I, I will now illustrate it with the scripture. Remember that uh, uh, parable of the talent. The, the, the parable of the talent had three servants. One was given five, five talents, one was given two, another was given one. You notice that the first two went and then invested in theirs, traded with theirs, and brought back a return. But the, uh, the last um, talent, the last servant with, the, with one talent, what he did was that he buried it. So what could have produced five ended up producing nothing because he didn't put it to use, praise Jesus. So I, I, maybe now is not the time to, you know, talk about this any further. We will as we go along and it will be, you know, really clear what we're talking about. Now, the next point is refusing to settle for the status quo ultimately leads to satisfaction. This is the way the author took it. Refusing to settle for the status quo ultimately leads to dissatisfaction. Oh, am I saying it right? Hmm? Right, okay. So, so, satisfaction in life or cause only when you stretch. So the author says at page 163, he says, it's useful to read it just to provide context. You will only reach potential if you have the courage to push yourself outside your comfort zone. You must be willing to leave behind what is familiar and, and safe and no, what is familiar, safe and secure. Our promotion, prosperity, and advancement are location driven. I'll repeat that. Our promotion, our prosperity, our advancement are location driven. The kingdom of God is a positional kingdom. And we see this in the life of Abraham. Genesis 12, 1 and 2. Now the Lord said unto, had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from my father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. What this verse means is that if Abraham didn't take up the location that God had instructed him to take, if Abraham hadn't stretched himself by leaving his family in the counties of the earth, what would have happened is that he would never have had Isaac. He would never have had Isaac. The fullness of his prosperity that we see in Genesis chapter 24, verse 35, where he says, And the Lord had blessed my master, this is his servant speaking, uh, greatly, and, and he's become great, and had given him flocks, herds, and herds, and silver, and gold, and men servants, and maid servants, and camels, and asses. All of that wouldn't have happened if Abraham didn't stretch himself and proceed to obey God's commandment. Listen, eh, when I say that the word that when I say that stretch um, the, the the blessings of the kingdom are locational, I don't necessarily mean uh, that you have to re relocate physically somewhere. Though, like in Abraham's case, it was so. The critical positional posture that we must take is obedience to the word of God. Once you are obedient to the word of God, you have moved locations in the spiritual, and therefore. In, in, in obedience, you are stretching yourself. God then is compelled, is constrained to meet you at your point of your need and to bless the works of your hands. So will it be for somebody listening to me today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, stretching starts from the inside out. Stretching starts from the inside out. Again, I'll just borrow from the author briefly to, to give it some meat and then I'll give some scriptural examples to illustrate the point. Stretching starts from the inside and out. At, pa at page 164, the author says, that's John C. Maxwell, perceive an ideal and strive to reach it. You cannot travel within 
and stand still without. You cannot travel within and stand still without. Actually, he was quoting a gentleman known as James Allen. So you cannot travel within and stand still without. The ideal we should always strive for is what is the word of God? The word of God is critical. Once we know what the word of God says, then our, our motives, our, our stretching, our, the tension is to move from where we are to where the ideal, which is the word of God, is. God will give us grace to do so in the name of Jesus. Stretching will only happen where the individual involved is in a state of deep or intense dissatisfaction. That is tension. Tension, the dissatisfaction may lead to conviction when the person has seen what the ideal word of God is. So that, 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 that dissatisfaction will, will move into conviction, compelling him to act in a particular way. So that's what's possible. However, uh, so stretching will only happen where the individual is involved is in a deep stent, deep, sorry, beg your pardon. Stretching will only happen where the individual involved is in a deep state of intense dissatisfaction. That is tension. Now, an example in the Bible you can find from Gideon. Gideon was a reluctant warrior. He transitioned because of his deep sense of satisfaction as to the state of affairs of the children of Israel. He transitioned from being the hiding, scared youth from the least family in the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh to becoming a warrior and a general and a judge of the children of Israel. In Judges chapter 6, verse 12 through to 13, I just need to read the scripture so you can see what he was before and what he now became ultimately. Um, in Judges 6, 12 through to 13, uh, it reads as follows. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, that is Gideon, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Praise Jesus. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Where and where are all his miracles which our father told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So you can see that he was in a state of dissatisfaction. He had seen that where he was presently was not where God had intended for them. He needed a transition. And it was that state of dissatisfaction that compelled him to transition. Praise Jesus. I'd like you to note something. It just struck me as I was reading the verse again just now. In verse 12, he says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Remember that Gideon was inside the, what you call it, he was inside the cave, sifting wheat where the wine press was. So in other words, he was in hiding. Yet, God called him something that he was not. Look, eh, the point I'm trying to make is simply this. God will declare your end from the beginning. And there's somebody that is feeling that God has forgotten him. There's somebody that is feeling, just like Gideon, feeling that things are against him. God is saying, God is saying, you are a mighty man of valor. And those things that appear to have bested you, ultimately, you will best them in the name of Jesus. Ultimately, you will best them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. So Gideon was unhappy with the status quo, comparing himself and Israel with the promises of God and the acts of God in the past. And this constrained him to volunteer, to act and lead as Israel's general, leading Israel's outnumbered forces into battle victoriously. Praise Jesus. Uh, uh, the woman with the issue of blood is another example of someone whose internal tensions led her to stretch. The woman with the issue of blood used her tension of 12 years, her dissatisfaction with life, to design an answer to her pain and her distress. The woman with the issue of blood used her tension of 12 years to design an answer to her pain and her distress. Her tension led her to stretching or growing, breaking every known protocol 
that existed in order to obtain virtue in a unique way that had never been seen before. You know, she did not call the she did not call Jesus and say, Jesus, please, I have a problem. Heal me. Like blind Bartimaeus did. She didn't. She didn't like um, the uh, what do you call him the 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 uh, Roman uh, li, um, Roman uh, centurion. She didn't like the Roman centurion. Say you know what uh, um, you all oh, ye members of the all oh, ye members of uh, this uh, what do you call it this uh, your worship house your synagogue. Please go and beg Jesus for me to come and heal my servant. It, it, she didn't do any of those ones. She her pain made her design her her solution and she received it merely by touching him. I say that will be somebody's portion here in the name of Jesus. You will not need to beg, grovel. God will answer you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So for that story, you can read it in Mark chapter 5, 25 through to 31. For that story, you can read it in Mark chapter 5, 20, Mark chapter 5, 25 through to 31. Uh, let's go on. Just by the way, just to round out that point, you can see that the woman wasn't the same woman that the affliction started with. The woman had transitioned. She was. She initially was helpless. She went to doctors. She spent all her money. They had. They had stolen her dignity in the physical inspections that they they had undertaken, and they had taken all her money. Nothing was left, but she acquired faith, and through her faith, she acquired the process to take delivery of our virtue. I profess over somebody listening here today, not only will you acquire faith to take delivery, you will require, you will receive the technology and the processes to download the supernatural into your situation and circumstance in the name of Jesus. You will come back and testify that I heard a word from heaven that moved me forward. And so will it be in the name of Jesus. Number four, stretching always requires change. Number four, um, as we, we're dealing with the benefits of tension or stretching. So stretching always requires change. So one of the things that happens when one of the things that happens when you begin to stretch is that change now happens. You 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 alter your modus operandi. You you alter your habits. You alter the way you think. You alter the way you behave. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Dealing with a new challenge always requires innovation. And innovation usually boils down to a change of approach or execution. Dealing with a new challenge always requires innovation. And innovation usually boils down to a change of approach or of execu or execution. So dealing with a new challenge always requires innovation and innovation usually boils down to a change of approach or execution. So the first thing is to forget the former things. First thing under this heading is to forget the former things. When you need to do a change, you can't be looking at the past. You cannot be looking at the past. Forget the former things for possibilities are not apparent when we are locked in the past. In other words, the possibilities that will set you free are not locked in the past. So you can't keep on looking at the past. You have to look uh, forward. Praise Jesus. Isaiah 43 verse 18, verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19 read as follows. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Praise Jesus. Secondly, under this heading, in order to figure out the change that is required to defeat our current challenge, Secondly, in order to figure out the change that is required to defeat our current challenge, we need to find out what God has to say about where you are and the challenge that you are facing. You need to find out what God is saying about where you are and the challenge you are facing. And I commend for your attention the verse of scripture, Isaiah 43, verses, verse 19. It's a continuation of what I read before. But, I mean, it, it splits up smoothly into this, this point. It says as follows, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? So before God does it, is that thing I said before, he declares the end from the beginning. So first of all, he'll tell you 
Just like he told Gideon, oh, you are a mighty man of valor. Meanwhile, the guy was hiding in the corner trying to get stuff done so that the Midianites would not see him. Praise Jesus. Shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He will make a way for somebody here in the name of Jesus. He will make a way in the way, a way in the wilderness for somebody listening in the name of Jesus. A river even in this desert caused by this pandemic in the name of Jesus. Thirdly, on the point number four, we must distill instructions which the Lord is giving to us in order to confront the challenge. Thirdly, we must distill instructions which the Lord is giving to us to confront the challenge. Embedded within the instructions that the Lord will give us are those things that we need to effect, the changes that we need to effect. I'll repeat that again. Thirdly, we must distill instructions which the Lord is giving to us to confront the challenge embedded within which those, embedded within those instructions are instructions or directions which we now need to effect. Praise Jesus. In, in Exodus chapter 17, Moses was confronted with a scenario where he had uh, over 2 million people who were thirsty and had no water to drink and he didn't have a clue what to do and the people were harassing him and abusing him. So what he did was that he went to the Lord in prayer and cried out to the Lord and then the Lord now gave him an instruction. The Lord said, see there is a tree. There is a tree there. Cut that tree and put it in the water and the waters which are bitter will now become eh, sweet. So, so for every, you know, every time we are faced with a challenge, it's critical that we receive the counsel of the Lord. When we receive the counsel of the Lord, the counsel of the Lord may stretch us, but by the time you are through, what you'll find out is that you are in a place so much bigger and wider than where you were when you started. That will be somebody's portion in the name of Jesus. Joshua 1 8 is a verse of scripture, another verse of scripture that I want to commend for your attention. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good a success. But here's the thing. The, the, the kicker here, the, the, the active ingredient in this verse for me, based on what we're looking at, is thou shalt meditate therein that thou mayest observe to do. So there's observation that will come from the Lord. In other words, when you look at him, he will then show you something. And then when you've now seen that something, you now do that thing. Praise Jesus. So let's move on to number... Okay, uh, uh, let me cite one more and then... Uh, uh, so, and then we'll go on to number five. Uh, I'd like to commend for your attention Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. And it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise Jesus. So, 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 under the subhead where we're looking at, we must distill instructions. You see, I'm going to go back to the life of Gideon for a minute. In Gideon's case, God gave him instructions to raise the altar of Baal. That was the first thing God told him to do. He didn't say go and fight the Midianites. He said, raise down that altar of Baal. Scatter it. Then when he finished telling him that, he then told him, okay, conscript an army. Gideon obeyed. When he then told him to conscript the army, he said, this army is too many. The children of Israel will begin to praise themselves that they are the ones who did it. Reduce the, uh, reduce the number to 300. And then when he had finished that, he then gave Gideon specific instructions as to what the battle plan would be and the timing. In other words, he said, go fight them at night, surround their camp, take pictures of uh, what you call it, take your picture, put a lamp in it, crack it open, blow your trumpet, then move into attack. And victory was assured. Praise Jesus. Remember this guy that was doing all these things that were, I just listed, all these things that I listed. Remember, this was the guy hidden in the wine press inside the cave so that they would not see his food to steal. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So, so instructions are critical. 
uh, Isaac was told by the Lord to stay in Gera in Genesis chapter 26, that he blessed him there. And that's exactly what happened. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Number five, stretching sets you apart from others. Stretching sets you apart from others. Stretching sets you apart from others. These are the characteristics or these are the things that happen when you stretch yourself. So when you stretch yourself, it sets you apart. When we stretch, we tend to over-deliver. When we stretch ourselves, even in the secular world, we tend to over-deliver. Hmm? You know, the pastor has too many scriptures to preach. What happened was that he prepared very hard. <laughs> So when we stretch, we tend to over-deliver. And when we consistently over-deliver, it tends to catapult us to the top. I'll repeat that again. When we stretch, we then tend to over-deliver. And when we over-deliver, it tends to catapult us to the top. This is because you have paid a price that no one else has paid. This is because you have paid a price that no one else has paid, saw fit to pay, or was able to pay. When we stretch, we tend to over-deliver. And when we over-deliver, it tends to catapult us to the top. This is because you've paid a price that no one else has paid. Praise Jesus. Another way to say what I'm saying is, when you stretch, when you over-deliver, what happens, the necessary consequence is there's a promotion. When we overstretch, when we overstretch, when we overdeliver, the necessary concomitants, let me use a legal expression, the necessary consequence, as night follows day, as of necessity, promotion follows. Amen. 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 Ecclesiastes 9, and if, in fact, that would be somebody's portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Do it with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. The B part of that verse tells me, even though it's not directly related to what we're saying, but it, 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 it underscores why we need to live intentionally about stretching is that our chances to impact are temporal and are temporary. Our chances to impact are temporary are temporal and in fact are also limited. In other words, you're not, you, there's, you're not going to, when, you, when we die, there's nobody to impress anymore. There's nobody, there's nobody to impress anymore. We need to look at life a little bit as if it were an investment, a long-term investment that we're making for a house that we're going to live in in the future. Unless you make the payments for the house here and now, when it is time to occupy the house, you can't occupy it. Why? Because you've not paid in full. So our chances to impact are temporal or temporary, and, are, it, is, and it is for a limited period. It's only for, for the period that we're, we're here on earth. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Stretching tends to set us apart from others. And I want to give some Bible examples of how of people who in the Bible stretched. And when they finished stretching themselves, I mean, they were on top. Um, Isaac stretched while he was in Gera by planting seed when everybody else was hoarding and eating theirs. And because of that, he became the leading individual in Gera. Genesis 26 from 12 onwards says, And the man reaped a hundredfold, and then he became great. And he waxed and, and went forward. Uh, uh, one man. And it was so that everybody, everybody was cleaning up in, in front of his house every day to buy live, I mean, food stock because they didn't have it anywhere else. And then after a while, they started complaining, this wicked man, eh, let him go, Joe. And then they started to envy him. Praise Jesus. Gideon stretched and became prince of Israel. Peter stretched and transitioned from the unstable fisherman to the, apostle in in, the first apostle in charge of the church of Jesus Christ. Paul stretched himself and he transitioned from persecutor in chief of the church to his chief proponent, Paul stretched himself 
Uh -uh, Paul, please, nobody should compare. Paul, aside from writing, in fact, let me, let me start from, he, he undertook three missionary journeys. Some people like James, they didn't leave Jerusalem. I'm not running him down. No. He, I mean, he was the pastor in, church, in charge of the church of Jerusalem, so maybe he was called to be a pastor. But Paul undertook three missionary journeys, three missionary journeys. Maybe I'm not saying it right. Let's hear his testimony from 2 Corinthians 11, 22 through to 26. Let's hear his testimony. Are they ministers of God? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, frequent. In debts, oft. Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Those stripes, it's not uh, moi moi, <laughs> sorry to use that expression. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a walk in the park. Let me, let me use a, a cliche to describe it. Use that cliche to describe it. It was, it was a flogging with horse whip, with, and not just any horse whip, a long horse whip, with, with the horse whip intertwined with all kinds of sharp objects, with the purport to peel the person's skin. So he suffered those stripes five times, 39 times, times five. Praise Jesus. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Not too sure what that one was. Once I was stoned. He was stoned and then was left for dead. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. You know that story, I think it's in Acts chapter 27. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils amongst false brethren. That is his testimony. This guy was a guy that was there, stretched. It was all this suffering that provided the material that allowed him right to thirds of the New Testament. Praise Jesus. How about Jesus? Jesus was also stretched. See uh, Philippians 2, 8 through to 11, and being found in fashion, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto, the de unto death, even the death of the cross. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Praise the Lord. Stretching can become a lifestyle, number six. Stretching can become a lifestyle. But I, I hope you can see that these examples that are brought out, the guys who were involved in stretching in each case, they ended up at the top of their class. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Hannah and Cor, look at Hannah in, in 1 Samuel chapter, chapters 1 and 2. It, because Hannah stretched herself in a unique way, not only in terms of the level of her, pray, her prayer level, uh, and the way she stormed the throne room of grace, but in terms of the vow she was prepared to give. God said, I, I have to answer this one. And then she began to make prophecies in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2 that looked like, uh, wow, so wasn't this woman a prophet? Immediately she overtook the one that they were, the one that thought that because she got pregnant first, she was, uh, she was Jane Bond. Anyway, let's move on. Number six, stretching can become a lifestyle. Stretching can become a lifestyle. John 15, 1, 1 through to 2, and then verse 16. I'm the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Uh, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask, of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. God has ordained growth and fruitfulness. God has ordained it. Jesus Christ has commanded it. Therefore, stretching is meant to be a lifestyle for a believer. Stretching is meant to be a lifestyle for a believer. Stretching is meant to be a lifestyle for a believer. Remember, I commended for your attention a verse in John 14 that says that... Uh, Ask until your joy be full. So, you know, um, we also need to be on the lookout um, because 
or let, let me say it differently. The direct opponents or enemies of the law of the rubber band and the proposition that we must keep stretching are things like complacency, success, the mindset that I have arrived. All those types of things are actually, they stand against stretching because once you've accomplished the goal, you have arrived, you have arrived, success and all of that, why am I bothering to stress myself? But the truth of the matter is that there's more that God expects from us. Praise Jesus. You will fulfill God's expectations in the name of Jesus. Stretching gives you a shot at significance. We are bound to be great when we operate in the land of the possible instead of the land of the permissible. We are bound to be great when we operate in the land of the possible instead of the land instead of the permissible. We are bound to have significance when we are operating in the realm when we see impossibilities and by the grace of God at work in our lives, we are able to translate them and transform them into possibilities, which is where we are as children of God. You see, children of the world, uh, they don't see supernaturally, but we see supernaturally. We not only see supernaturally, we transact supernaturally. Someone who is a believer in motion today, someone can say, oh, uh, where's his life going to? But in Christ, give him a time, a time frame, five years, six years, seven years, he will be living in Victoria Island. He will be renting office accommodation in, 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 on Lagos Island. He will have a factory in Ilupeju. And someone looking at him now says it's not possible. But for us, it is possible. Why? Luke 137 says, with God, all things are possible. That's the realm in which we transact. Praise Jesus. All right. So just to round up, uh, round up what we've discussed thus far, I just want to, uh, what's the word? Look at this matter from God's perspective or look at it from a, 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 a perspective that shows what, no, that shows the why, why stretching is important. So I'm trying to look at some of the reasons why stretching, uh, why the law of the rubber band is important. So the first one is, uh, this is easy, we are imitators of Jesus Christ, conformed to his image. Therefore, as he was stretched in order to attain glory, we too will be stretched in order to attain glory. We are imitators of Christ, we are conformed to his image, Romans 8 verse 29. Therefore, as he was stretched, in order to attain glory, so it is for us. Praise Jesus. Number two, we are going to account for the life that we have lived when we are done on this planet. Second Corinthians 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We are going to account for the life we have lived when we are done on this planet. And the law of the rubber band now makes us live intentionally, making the right investments while here on earth that will guarantee us eternal rewards and escape from censure on the day of reckoning. What the law of the rubber band does, I'll repeat, it makes us live intentionally, that we will live making the right investments while here on earth that would guarantee us eternal rewards and ensure that we escape censure on the day of reckoning referred to in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. May God deliver us from censure uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. This word that we have heard today will not be, uh, what you call it, a testimony against us in the name of Jesus. Number three, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Tension and stretching are tools by which God conforms us to the image of his son or elevates us back to our original image that we were created in when man was created in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. When Adam was created initially. So, 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 so there's, 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 um, what's the word? The, we are living in a fallen world and we are also fallen men. But through stretching, 
through tension, God brings us to the place of expansion where we are now exactly in the image of God, where we begin to see things the way God sees them. It allows us appropriate supernatural and divine power. It allows us appropriate supernatural resources that are available that makes the impossible possible and makes the difficult easy and that makes the expensive cheap. Praise Jesus. All right. Next one, number four. A proper understanding of the law of the rubber band makes us step out of our comfort zone again and again. Whenever circumstances or an ideal or a kingdom project or objective we are chasing requires it. Let me say that again. A proper understanding of the law of the rubber band makes us step out of our comfort zone. Makes us step out of our comfort zone. Makes us be prepared to do whatever it is we need to do. And this is so because, oh sorry, let me just go back to my notes. And and um, a proper understanding of the law of the rubber band makes us step out of our comfort zone again and again. Whenever circumstances or an ideal or a kingdom objective we are chasing requires it. Or we deploy the law of the rubber band as a lifestyle choice. So you're constantly pushing, you're constantly pushing, you're constantly pushing. Praise Jesus. Because of the fallen nature of the world, God needs enhanced and stretched men and women. Because of the fallen nature of the world, God needs enhanced and stretched men and women with enhanced capacities or with problem-solving capacities. Agents whom he can use as a conduit for his supernatural power to resolve the challenges on the earth. Praise the Lord. I can imagine God looking down from heaven and looking at what is going on and all the rubbish that is going on and all the men and women that are living below the standards that he had set for them, all the men and women that are living below the places where God had set for them and he's looking and he's looking and he's looking and, and one of the ways by which he elevates us from where we are to the standard, to the place that he has set for us. Remember Gideon, he had started calling him, calling him a mighty man of valor while he was hiding. How God does it is that God will let stretch us. He will provide us with tension, internal dissatisfaction that now prompts us to act. Praise Jesus. God is seeking to invade the earth with heaven, to have his will done on the earth as it is in heaven. And therefore uses stretching to prepare his agents, believers in Christ Jesus, as conduits, as pipelines for his blessings and power. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Heavenly Father, King of glory, I ask that you dispatch your angels of warfare, your angels of enforcement, to enforce this word in our lives in the name of Jesus. The birds of the air will not steal this word from us in the name of Jesus. Everywhere we go, our hearts will be on fire with the desire to stretch for you, to apprehend the goodness that you have prepared for us. Father, oh Lord, that we will not be brought to shame on the last day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Finally, I pray, is there anybody on this call who's not given his life? I'd like you to, to, to declare where you are sitting. Say, Lord Jesus, accept me as... Accept me as one of your children. Accept me as one of your children. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Let my name never be erased in your mercy. Thank you, everlasting Father. Give me the grace to be empowered by this word. Not just I, but everyone who's heard it. And those who will hear the replays later. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' most exalted name, we have prayed. And the saints of God listening who are ready to stretch shall say a powerful amen. Please stand by. The main service is going to kick off at 4.30 uh, by the grace of God. So just join back in later at 4.30. Sister B is going to be taking it. God bless you richly. Have a blessed week. Stay rapturable and stay victorious. In Jesus' most exalted name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen.